In this video, we are going to be looking at all the perks in the game, how long it takes you to unlock them all, what you'll need, how many skill points you'll need, what level you need to be to get them all to rank one unlocked, and all of that great stuff. So if you do around here, hit the like button, subscribe, and let's just jump straight into it. Okay, as you can see, I'm ranked 250 on this game because I'm a badass, um, but no, obviously I use the cheats to get all the perk points that I needed so I could make this video. Don't worry, I am going to restart the game from level one. Uh, but we have all the perks unlocked on what they do, um, which is pretty damn cool. So first and foremost, in the physical tree, we have boxing, which unarmed attacks do 25% more damage and 25% less O2 used when using a power attack. And those things increase with the ranks, as you can see there. I won't read them all out, but that's what happens when you level them up. Fitness, you have 10% more oxygen. All the way up to sprinting and power attacks now use significantly less, which is fun. We have stealth adds a stealth meter. You are 25% more difficult to detect when sneaking. Suppress weapons do an additional 5% sneak attack damage. And that all increases as well with the ranks, which I think is a really cool perk and probably a second playthrough for me. Then we have weightlifting, increased total carrying capacity by 10 kg, all the way up to 100 kgs, and you gain 50% resistance to stagger. Wellness has increased your maximum health all the way up to 40%. Then we have energy weapon dissipation. Any energy weapon damage is reduced by 5%. I'm assuming against you. <laughs> um, and all the way up to 25% chance to reflect energy damage um, when your attacker is below 50% health. That's a cool ass perk in my opinion. Environmental conditioning gained 10 resistance to airborne, airborne environmental damage all the way up to reduced chance to gain afflictions from environmental damage sources. Um, and you got thermal and corrosive and radiation resistance too. So if you want to be a big a big boy that's protected by everything, this is the perk. <laughs> and we have gymnastics. Unlock the ability to combat slide and take 15% less fall damage. Move faster in 0G and take less fall damage. Become more stable while firing in 0G so you won't move around too much. Uh, replenish some O2 after mantling. And then you get increased jump height. Run faster after sliding or mantling. So this is your perk if you want to run and gun basically and just get stuck in. Um, I like that as well. Nutrition, food and drink are 10% more effective all the way up to 50% more effective, which is going to be a very useful perk. Pain tolerance, physical damage reduced all the way up to 5% chance to ignore physical damage when your health is low, which, you know, is going to help when you're trying to survive if you've got it, especially if you've got it on the hardest difficulty. Cellular regeneration, slightly increased chance to recover from injuries naturally. All the way up to 20% chance of not gaining an injury at all where you otherwise would. We have decontamination. Slightly increased chance to recover from infections naturally. All the way up to 20% chance of not gaining an infection when you should. Martial arts. 15% increased chance to crit with a melee or unarmed attack. This could go well with your boxing perk. Uh, while unarmed or wielding a melee weapon, take 10% less damage and then reflect 50% damage when blocking a melee or unarmed attack. So if you go full melee, this is going to be a great perk. Then we have down here, concealment. You no longer set off enemy mines. Ranged sneak attacks do two and a half times the normal damage. And your melee sneak attacks do four times normal damage. So again, with your stealth and such things, this is going to be a big, big perk. Running while sneaking doesn't affect stealth. That's incredible. Um, you gain comedian-like ability when completely still and sneaking. So people just won't be able to see you. And then you get increased all the damage and stuff. Engaging stealth causes distant enemies to lose you. Um, and then all the extra damage and stuff too. Neuro strikes, 10% chance to stun an NPC with unarmed attacks. Unarmed attacks will now do EM damage. 20% chance to stun an NPC with an unarmed attack. And after stunning an enemy, you also knock down any enemies within close range. So again, if you want to use the boxing and martial arts skills and neuro strikes, you're going to be pretty unstoppable. And last but not least, in physical, we have rejuvenation. Slowly regenerate health outside of combat uh, more quickly, much faster. Um, you now slowly regenerate health while in combat and then regenerate health even faster outside of combat and you regenerate health quickly while in combat. So, you know, again, pretty good for your melee build if you want to get stuck in and be able to heal and, and just beat people up. Next up, we have the social tree. We have commerce, buy for 5% less and sell for 10% more. All the way down to buy for 20% less and sell for 25% more. We have gastronomy. 
You can craft speciality foods and drinks and research additional recipes at the research lab all the way up to crafting food and drinks occasionally doesn't use up resources and you can research and craft exotic recipes so this will be a great perk if you really want to get like some unique things to be able to cook and make persuasion 10 percent increased chance of success when persuading someone all the way up to 50 percent which is you know very useful scavenging there's a chance you'll find extra credits when searching containers there's a chance you'll find extra ammo there's a chance you'll find extra first aid and tracked resources will get highlighted when using the hand scanner so you if you want something very specific you can very easily find it cool perk not for me um but i guess it's got its place theft allows you to pickpocket targets 10 percent greater chance 30 percent greater chance and 50 percent greater chance and you can now pickpocket holstered weapons so you can steal people's weapons off their person which you know again with your stealth build is going to be a lot of fun then we have a deception ships 10 percent stronger will automatically surrender to piracy demands so when you're in the sky and you you might try and raid someone and stuff you'll be able to have this perk and be able to do things a little bit easier all the way up to 50 percent stronger um ships will automatically surrender and enemy contraband scans are 50 percent less effective so you won't be seen as often with this perk by pirates so that's pretty damn cool diplomacy you can force a target npc at or below your level to stop fighting for a while all the way up to you can force the target npcs to permanently stop um, unless they're attacked again and then you got 10 and 20 levels higher intimidation you can force a target embassy at or below your level to flee for a limited time 10 20 levels higher and you know you can get them to flee for a substantial amount of time not really my kind of perk i want to get in there get stuck in then we have isolation do 10 percent weapon damage plus and gain 15 damage resistance for each space suit and helmet equipped when you don't have a companion or crew this is a lot of words but basically when you're on your own you're going to get some buffs all the way up to 40 percent plus weapon damage and 60 damage resistance for each space suit and helmet equipped when you don't have companions or crew so if you're running around on your own and you've got those traits that help you get more oxygen and more health and stuff when you're on your own this is going to be a great perk to to roll into then we have negotiation bribery is available in speech challenges um costs 25 percent less costs 50 percent less won't cost any money at all instigation you can force the target npc at or below your level to attack their allies for a limited amount of time then you got the 20 and 10 levels higher enemies affected by instigation will attack their allies until they are dead so you can just have someone just do all the work for you basically leadership companions gain affinity 25 percent faster companions have 50 more health and 50 kg more carrying capacity uh, they will occasionally heal you when you're low health and doubles the bonuses of combat and physical crew skills on companions companions have a chance to pick themselves up from a down state so if you're going to be running around with your buddies this is going to be a great perk to choose then we have outpost management additional cargo links can be placed at outposts additional robots can be constructed at outposts additional crew can be assigned at outposts and outpost extractors produce twice as fast so when you're building a farm or a res you know resources and you've got an outpost you can just do more things when you have this perk make it more efficient and cool manipulation you can force a target npc at or below your level to obey commands for a limited time 10 and 20 levels higher and then manipulated targets now obey commands for a substantial amount of time again these types of perks just exist in the social tree you're going to find what you like best and then we've got ship command you can have up to four active crew members five six or eight active crew members i think this is going to be an important um, perk for a lot of people so i'm looking forward to seeing what an eight man ship is going to look like Zedo sociology that's a very hard word to say for me you can force the target alien creature up to 10 levels higher than you to stop fighting um you can cause them to flee you can force the target alien creature up to 10 levels higher than you to attack their allies and then you can force the target creature up to 10 levels higher to obey commands for a limited time so all of those other perks we just saw before kind of rolled into one for your aliens to be able to control them and you know just do cool little things with them and that's the social tree let's move on to combat i think something that we all want to look at we have ballistic weapons do 10 percent more damage 20 percent 30 percent and then the range is increased by 30 percent as well i love that little octopus with all the guns as well that's hilarious to me then we have dueling we've read a little bit about this you know melee weapons do 25 percent more damage and take 10 percent less damage while wielding a melee weapon 
melee kills make you run faster, melee weapons do 50% more damage and take 15% less, and melee kills will heal you for 10% of your health. So if you want to be like a little ninja guy running in with melee weapons, getting close up, this is going to be a cool ass perk. Lasers. Laser weapons do 10%, 20%, 30% more damage. And then laser weapons have a 5% chance to set a target on fire, which I think will be a lot of fun to, to watch and look at because that would be hilarious. Then we have pistol certification. They do 10% more damage, 25% more damage, 50% more damage. And then pistol kills grant 25% critical hit chance for 5 seconds. So if you're a little run and gunner with a pistol, pick this perk. Same with shotguns, I'm assuming it's going to be exactly the same except for rank 4 will be shotgun kills grant a small chance to stun additional targets. So, you know, if you're, if you're a running gunner and you want to get in close and personal and blast people with shotguns, you're going to be able to do a bit of crowd control too. Demolitions allows for an arc to show when you're throwing your grenade and explosions have a 25% larger radius, 25% more damage, you reduce your damage taken from explosive by 25% and then all the previous bonuses are doubled. <clears throat> so if you're getting in there blowing things up, going to be goddamn cool for that. Heavy weapon certification, again the same increase in damage, uh, but then you get 25% physical resistance while aiming down sights with a heavy weapon. We have incapacitation, EM weapons do 5% more damage, 10%, 15%, and EM weapons have a 15% chance to do 300% EM damage. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that's a lot, 300%, Jesus. Um, particle beams, 10%, 20%, 30%, and 5% crit chance at rank 4. Rifle certification, 10, 20, 30, and reload them 30% faster while you're standing still. Then we have marksmanship, increased critical hit chance with non-automatic ranged weapons by 3%, 8%, 15%. Critical hits using a non-automatic ranged weapon without a scope do double damage, and those with scopes knock down enemies on the next shot. So if you're a ranged fighter and you want to snipe people, this is going to be one hell of a perk in my opinion. Rapid reloading allows you to reload various weapons 30% faster. Rank 3 will give you a 50% chance to avoid getting interrupted while reloading. And then on rank 4, chance on hitting enemies to increase reload speed for all weapons by 50% for 15 seconds. This is going to be very useful for runner and gunners. Like You're going to be able to just get in, blast the hell out of people, get a bit of a reload speed increase so you're constantly reloading, constantly firing. So there's a lot of fun things you can do here. Um, then we got sniper certification. Scope weapons are steadier and have less sway. You can hold your breath longer with scope weapons. Headshots while aiming with a scope weapon have a plus 25% critical hit chance. And scoped weapons do 50% more damage while using the scope. So these are your aim down sniper weapons that you're going to absolutely demolish with. Targeting, in my opinion, is a great perk. You shoot from the hip, so, you know, fanning the hammer like a little cowboy boy, and you can have increased accuracy and range when shooting without aiming. Rank 1 marks up to one enemy that damages you within 25 meters. Rank 2 is two enemies within 50. Rank 3 is uh, three enemies within 75 meters that damage you and obviously increased accuracy and range as you go through. And at rank 4, you'll have a 10% chance to disarm those targets that you're shooting at and you'll mark up to four enemies within 100 meters that are damaging you. Epic. I'm loving that perk. And then we have armor penetration. Attacks ignore 15% of targets armor, 30, 50%. And then enemy armor is decreased by 25% for six seconds after a critical hit. So, you know, this is going to be a very cool perk for those big, big bosses, those big boys that are very hard to kill. Uh, next up, we have crippling. Human enemies have a 30% increased chance to enter a down state after taking enough damage. Humanoid. 50% increased chance. Human enemies can now enter a down state earlier and previous ranks now apply to all enemy types. You can now do 100% more damage to downed enemies. So this is going to be a ruthless perk. Getting in there, doing a bunch of damage, knocking them down and finishing them off. I like it. Sharpshooting. Increase headshot critical damage by 50% with ranged weapons. Increase critical damage to enemy legs by 50%. Increase all critical damage to enemies by 50% with ranged weapons. Ranged critical hit kills increase your critical hit chance with all ranged weapons by 25% for 20 seconds. So your long range sniper kills are going to be very useful with sharp shooting. Now we move on to the science perks. Astrodynamics increase the grab jump range by 15%. Reduced fuel cost of those jumps by 15%. 
um, both of them to 30% and reduced fuel cost of jump drives by 50%. So this is just going to improve how you travel in space from planet to planet. Then we have geology, one that I've been very, very curious about because I didn't know until now. Get more common and uncommon inorganic resources from surface objects. Get more rare inorganic resources from surface objects. Get more exotic inorganic resources from surface objects. Occasionally harvest additional rarer resources from surface objects. So while you're doing your mining and such things, this perk is going to allow you to get more unique things that you can take and probably sell or use in various ways medicine med packs trauma packs and emergency kits restore 10 percent additional health 10 percent faster rank 2 is 20 percent 30 percent and then rank 4 is med packs trauma packs and emergency kits restore 50 percent but they also have a chance to cure an affliction so pretty cool if you want to kind of stay alive research methods resources required to craft items and complete research projects is reduced by 10 percent 20 percent 40 percent and then sudden developments during research are twice as common resources required to craft items and complete research projects is reduced by 60 percent i don't know what researching and stuff is right now but it seems like it's an important part of the game and this perk's obviously going to help that a lot surveying adds optimal zoom to the hand scanner and scan distance is increased to 20 all the way up to 50 meters so again if you like exploring and stuff this is going to be a fun perk then we have botany get more common and un uncommon organic resources from plants learn additional info about them from the scanner and allow some plants to be cultivated at your outposts rare and organic resources from plants you can get and you can learn about them quicker from scanning exotic and um, harvest additional rarer resources from plants so again your exploration your plants and stuff that you want to do for science-based things where you can use those ingredients you're going to harvest a lot more exotic things more often scanning you can detect uncommon inorganic resources on planet and moon surfaces and more information about ships in space um again i think these just like the same kind of direction as before you get them more often and you get more exotic ones um so yeah just just a lot of a lot of fun things for you to do spacesuit design you can craft improved spacesuits helmets and pack mods and research additional mods at the research lab um, you can research and craft superior spacesuits cutting edge spacesuits and then construction of spacesuit helmet and pack mods occasionally doesn't cost resources so you this is going to be a perk for everyone i think because everyone's going to want to have cool ass spacesuits and and in, you know increase your mods that you can get from the research lab so this is definitely one i will choose on my main character weapon engineering is pretty much the same i believe but with weapons you can research and craft master level weapon mods so this is how you get mods for your weapons and we have zoology get more common organic resources from creatures and harvest them without harming them learn additional info about them from the scanner and allows you to produce animal resources at your outposts more uncommon organic resources and you learn about them faster with the scanner rare organic resources and get extra you know rarer resources more often so when you're killing and murdering all the animals and stealing all their body parts this is going to help quite a lot astrophysics you can scan the moons of your current planet and you have 10 percent chance to discover a trait when scanning um 20 percent 30 percent and you can scan any planet within light 16 light years you can scan any planet or moon within 30 light years you have a 50 percent chance to discover a trait while scanning so you know when you're exploring planets this is what you want to get before you go to that planet so you can see what you're getting yourself into chemistry you can create improved chems and research additional chems at the research labs superior cutting edge and you get triple the amount that you have crafted outpost engineering you can construct improved outpost modules and research additional modules at the research lab superior cutting edge and then now cost 50 percent fewer resources to build next up we have a new i don't even know that's a neutronic fusion wow ship reactors produce one extra unit of power two three and five extra units of power planetary habitation we have you can build outposts on planets with extreme temperatures deep freeze and inferno increase the maximum number of outposts you can build by four 
then we have 8, 12, and 16. So you can build outposts in dangerous planets. And special projects, you can research experimental projects at the research lab, craft rare manufactured components at the workbench, craft exotic manufactured combat components at the workbench there's a lot to say here and my voice has stopped working <laughs> you can craft unique manufactured components at the workbench and outpost extractors have a chance to produce additional resources so again if you want to like involve yourself in new things and find unique cool things the science tree is going to be a lot of fun then we move on to the last tree the tech tree so we have ballistic weapons um, systems. Ballistic ship weapons have a 10% increased damage and cost 20% less to use in targeting mode. 20% um, increased damage and recharge 15% faster. Increased damage and recharge 30% faster. And ballistic ship weapons do 50% more damage to individual systems. So, you know, when you're going to be dogfighting in space, this is going to be a great perk to have boost pack training you can now utilize boost packs um, expends less fuel regenerates quickly and doubles the previous bonuses so you know if you want to get around quick and do some cool little flying stuff this is going to be a great perk piloting you can now utilize the ship thrusters so you can go faster as you're traveling through space not necessarily that great because you can fast travel everywhere but i, I suppose it has its uses um, but you want this perk for the increased turning rate and maneuverability so that your dogfight is a little bit easier and then you can get better um, class ships which is cool security you can attempt to hack advanced locks and two auto attempts can be banked um Expert locks and three auto attempts. Master level locks and four auto attempts. And expend a digipick to eliminate keys that aren't required to solve this puzzle. So you can, whatever you usually would need for a harder puzzle, you can use a digipick instead. And you get five auto attempts, which I believe is just like you get a chance just to hit a button and it might unlock it without you having to play the mini game. Um, so again, if you want to, you know be stealth and rob people and pickpocket and you know just be a little thief this one's going to be a great perk to go with that targeting control systems unlocks the ship's targeting functionality time to lock on is reduced by 15 percent and target lock ships fire at you 25 percent slower time to lock on to enemies is 30 percent and you have a 10 percent increased chance of critically hitting a target locked ship and then time to lock onto enemy ships is reduced by 60% and you deal 20% increased system damage in targeting mode. So again, for your dogfighting and blowing people up, that's what you want. Energy weapons system. So this is pretty much like what we've just seen before, but for energy um, weapons on your ship. So you'll get to use less and do increased damage and recharge faster. Again, you're going to want this if you're going to be dogfighting engine systems your ship's top speed is increased by 10 percent um, the ship boost lasts longer and the cooldown is shorter your ship's top speed is increased by 20 percent and while boosting all enemies disengage the player and you can only reacquire them as a target after the player stops boosting so if you want to get away from people this will be a great perk to have payloads is increase all your ship cargoes by 10 20 30 and 50 percent shield systems um, your ship has 20 percent increased shield capacity all the way down to 60% and then your shields will occasionally resist 100% of all damage received. Again, for your dogfighting, this is what you're going to need. Missile weapon systems, exactly like what we've seen before. Um, increased damage, reduced targeted mode cost. And then ship missiles have a 20% increased range, travel speed and reload speed, which is cool as well. Particle ball, par particle ball, <laughs> particle beam weapons same thing but increased critical hit chance with ship particle beam weapons targeting mode and um damage 30 percent 20 percent 10 percent robotics allows you to deal 10 percent more damage to robots and turrets and you can force a target robot up to 10 levels higher than you to stop fighting for a limited time 20 percent and they get to flee for a limited time 30% and you can get them to attack their allies for a limited time and you can force a target robot up to 10 levels higher than you to obey commands for a limited time. I don't think I'm going to use this one. I don't think many people will use this one. I feel like the damage you'll do anyway will be good enough. Starship design allows the installation of improved ship modules, superior cutting edge and experimental ship modules, which I think is going to be really cool and unique to make your ship do things that you wouldn't be able to do um, with the experimental ship modules. 
Starship Engineering. All ship systems repair 10% faster. All ship systems have 25% increased damage mitigation. All of them repair 25% faster and occasionally repairing one block of a system will repair the entire system because obviously, you know, you do little by little on your repairing. This may just give you an instant repair to full health. Um, automated weapons systems, very much like before, um, more damage, reduced costs and you know, you take less damage while in targeting mode. These ones are a little bit more different. You know, automated ship weapons do 30%, reduced costs by 40%, but this increases critical chance against a targeted subsystem by 20%. And then ship turret weapons recharge 40% faster and do 20% more damage to the targeted subsystem. So this is your kind of like go-to weapon for the most part. So increasing that is going to be really, really... Boost assault training. Nearby enemies take damage when you boost and have a chance to catch on fire. Chance to knock down nearby enemies when you boost. Aiming down sights while boosting will let you hover in place. Fuel is still expended until empty. And while hovering, time slows down and the world moves 70% slower around you. So you're on some real max pain stuff with that. And obviously with your booster pack, getting around, flying around, getting above people, having that slow down with the world is just going to make it easier to pick off people. Pretty damn cool. And then last, but certainly not least, EM weapons systems. Again, increased damage, less cost when you're using targeting mode. Same thing we've seen. Um, and then EM ship weapons have a small chance of instantly disabling enemy engines. So those are all the perks. This costs me 80 skill points to unlock all of them to rank one. So you are going to need to be at least level 80 to get access to every single perk in this game. Now, as you rank them up to like rank two, I don't know whether it's still going to cost you skill points to unlock the next rank. But you, if you want to get everything to rank four, it might take a lot of skill points. But, you know, level 80 is what you're aiming at to get at least everything unlocked to the bare minimum. But yeah. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helped. I hope this you know, helps you with your decision on where to go with your character and all of that great fun stuff. So yeah, thank you for watching. I've been easy now. You guys have been awesome.